In this section, our goal is to be able to determine the domain, range, zeros, intercepts, roots, solutions, and behavior of a quadratic function. We will also be able to evaluate quadratic functions. Let's take a look at this situation. Chris threw a rock into the air from the ground. The following graph shows how high the rock was in the air over an interval of time in seconds. The graph can be modeled by the quadratic function r of x equals negative x squared plus 8x, where r represents the height of the rock in feet and x represents the time in seconds. How high was the rock after one second? After four seconds? After 10 seconds? Let's take a look at the graph to help us answer this question. Notice that this graph is curved, unlike the graphs we've been studying so far that have been straight lines. This is called a parabola. A parabola is a graph made from a quadratic function like this one. Let's try to find how high the rock was after one second. So I look on the x-axis where it says one second and I go up to the function. It's a bit hard to tell where exactly this point is on the y-axis, but I can guess it's somewhere between six and eight. To find a more exact answer, we can evaluate the function r of x. So if r of x equals negative x squared plus 8x, I can plug in 1, I can substitute 1 for the x. So r of 1 equals negative 1 squared plus 8 times 1. 1 squared, we do exponents first, is 1 times 1, which makes 1, and I put the negative in front, plus 8 times 1, which makes 8. Negative 1 plus 8 makes 7. So how high was the rock after one second? It was at 7 feet. So the answer to the first one, 7 feet after one second or one second gives seven feet. How about after four seconds? Again, we can go to the graph, four seconds. I go up to the curve, and I see that it looks like it's at approximately, hmm, where is this? Well, we're counting by twos, so two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. This looks like it's around 16, but let's evaluate the function to be sure. R of four equals negative, I'm plugging in a number, so instead of x, I will put the parentheses and then the number, squared plus eight times, instead of x, I put four. Four squared makes 16, and I put the negative in front. Eight times four makes 32. Negative 16 plus 32 makes 16. So after four seconds, the rock was 16 feet high. I can also use my calculator to help evaluate the function. Let's go to the calculator and in y equals, let's plug in this function. So I'll type negative x, to get the squared, the exponent of two, I see this button that says x squared. That will give me the squared. And then plus eight x plus eight x. And now we'll go to the table to see the values. Second table. So we can see that at one second, the rock is seven feet high, just like when we evaluated it by hand. At four seconds, there's four, the rock was 16 feet high. Well, notice the last question says after 10 seconds. So looking down here at 10 seconds, I see 
negative 20. So without having to plug it in and evaluate by hand, my calculator says at 10 seconds, it's at negative 20. Let's talk about that for a minute. So at 10 seconds, it says negative 20 feet. Well, what does that mean? Chris threw a rock into the air. Here it starts at zero feet. This is the ground. It goes up, it comes back down, it ends at the ground after eight seconds. Can it go to negative feet below the ground? Not really. This answer doesn't make sense. Think about what does make sense since a negative answer doesn't make sense. If the rock starts at the ground, travels up and comes back down, probably the rock ends up staying on the ground until it gets picked up and thrown again. So after 10 seconds, probably zero feet, meaning on the ground. Sometimes we have to think logically. So again, that type of function was called a quadratic. A quadratic equation is an equation that can be written in the standard form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. Notice that there has to be a squared term in a quadratic. See that squared right there? That's what makes it a quadratic. Similarly, a quadratic function is a nonlinear function that can be written in the standard form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So again, what makes it a quadratic is that exponent of 2. Notice also it says nonlinear, not a line, not a line, not a line, but instead a parabola. And whose graph is a parabola? That's a U-shaped curve. The parabola will have a vertex. The vertex is the maximum or minimum point of the parabola, also known as the turning point. Let's discuss the behavior of quadratics. We've talked about this a little bit before with lines. Label where the function is increasing and decreasing, the ordered pair for the vertex, and whether the vertex is a maximum or minimum. So reading the graph like we do from left to right, First, notice that the graph is going down until it gets to this point. So this section of the graph is decreasing. The next section of the graph is going up. This section of the graph is increasing. Remember, decreasing means going down, increasing means going up. Again, decreasing is going down, increasing is going up. Now let's write the ordered pair for the vertex. The vertex is the turning point. Where does the graph change from decreasing to increasing in this graph? That's right here. The ordered pair is the x and the y for that point. From the origin, we count 2 to the right, so that's positive 2, and then 1 down, so negative 1. The vertex is at 2, negative 1. Now, is that vertex a maximum or a minimum? Is it a high point of the graph or a low point of the graph? This one's a low point, so this one is a minimum. Let's take a look at this graph. First, let's label what the graph is doing as we begin reading it from the left. Notice that when I draw on my pencil with my pencil, the graph is going up. So first, the graph is 
increasing. Then, after it turns, the graph is going down. So now the graph is decreasing. Where did it turn? The turning point is right here. Again, that's at 2, negative 1. But this time, that's a high point in the graph. So this time, the vertex is a maximum. Let's talk about domain and range of quadratics. Remember that domain is the x values of the function and range is the y values of the function. Let's begin by talking about the domain. Here's the x-axis. Remember it goes left and right. So when we're looking at the domain, we want to ask ourselves, what is the graph doing to the left? Well, notice the arrow to the left, so it keeps going to the left forever. Notice on the right side of the graph, there's also an arrow, so it keeps going to the right forever. And when the graph goes left and right forever, the x values are all real numbers, or the domain is all real numbers, because there's no restriction on what x can be. Remember that another way to write all real numbers, a shorter way, is with the squiggly bracket x such that x is an element of the set of all real numbers. Nice big capital R for that all real numbers set. A quadratic function will always have the domain all real numbers because it will always be this u-shape whether it's opening up or opening down and it will always be going to the left and to the right forever. So if we see a quadratic function or a parabola graph, then we know to always write for the domain all real numbers, x such that x is an element of the all real numbers, of the real numbers set. Range is a little trickier because there is a restriction since there is a maximum or a minimum. Range like the y-axis, we look up and down. So looking down, this is the lowest that the graph goes right here. What y-value is the lowest that it goes? That's at negative 1. So the lowest it goes is at negative 1, but then what does the graph do? It goes up, 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 and because of the arrow, we see that it's going up forever. So when it goes up, we want to think of everything bigger than negative 1. Going up means greater than or equal to because it can reach negative 1. So for the range, we say the set y such that y is greater than or equal to negative 1. Let's take a look at what this graph is doing. Notice this time the turning point is a maximum. So the high point of the graph is at negative 1. What's the low point of the graph? Well, see, it goes down forever. So it goes down, and it doesn't stop ever. So values less than negative 1 or equal to it because the graph does get to negative 1. So the range is all the y values such that y is less than or equal to negative 1. Because parabolas either open up or down, your range will always involve y being greater than or equal to some number or y being less than or equal to some number. Finally, let's review intercepts, zeros, roots, and solutions. Write the y-intercept, x-intercepts, because there might be more than one, zeros, because there might be more than one, roots, and solutions for each quadratic. First, the y-intercepts. So noticing here the y-axis, it looks like the graph is crossing the y-axis approximately at positive two. So let's write that as an ordered pair, zero comma 2. 
the x is 0, the y is 2. Now let's take a look at the x-intercepts. So looking at the x-axis, I see it touches or crosses here and here at 1, 0 and at 3, 0. X-intercepts and zeros mean the same thing. So whatever I wrote for x-intercepts, I'll also write for zeros. 1, 0, and 3, 0. Now essentially, roots are the same thing as well. But we'll write those as x equals 1 and x equals 3. When it says solution set, we want to write set notation. But it is the same thing as roots, zeros, and x-intercepts. So the squiggly bracket for the set, and then the x values that make up the roots, 1 and 3. Maybe you pause the video, try the second one on your own, and then see how you did. Let's see where this graph crosses the y-axis, approximately at negative 2, so 0, comma, negative 2. Where does the graph cross the x-axis or touch the x-axis? It doesn't. It never touches the x-axis. So x-intercepts, I don't have any. I have none. Zeros, again, the x-intercepts and zeros mean the same thing, so none as well. Roots, well, there aren't any real number roots, because I never see it touching the x-axis, we'll get into what imaginary roots are at a later date. We'll just say for now, no real roots. And because there are no roots, the solution set will be empty, just squiggly brackets, just the empty set. Take a couple of minutes to describe how the graph of a quadratic is different from the graph of a line. See you in class.